Right, we're jumping to 2-6 today. In 2-5, it talks about scatter plots and regressions, and we're going to learn about regressions later on. We're going to be in 2-6 today, talking about special functions, all right? And namely, we're going to talk about this thing called a piecewise function right here in the highlighted part. Again, page 101 in your textbooks. And so what it's going to be today is we're going to look at one graph, but graphing different lines on that and then defining what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to jump in to example one right here. And here's what it's asking. It says, okay, we want to graph f of x. So remember, f of x is just determining that, hey, we've got a function or functions here. So my first one is they want us to graph x minus 2, but then it says if x is less than negative 1. We'll deal with that in a second. Then it says they want us to graph x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay? So what they've done is basically they're saying, hey, we want to see two graphs here on one xy graph or on one Cartesian coordinate graph. So as we do this, the, the way I'm going to teach this up front is we're going to graph both of them, and then I'll kind of show you what the final graph is going to look like. So my first graph right here, I am strictly going to graph f of x equals x minus 2. So we're just going to graph that first and take a look at it. So I think we're okay with graphing this. If you're not... Remember, anytime you want a graph, you can go on the graphing calculator. You can go to y equals. You can do x minus 2. If you will hit zoom 6, it will give you a standard window. So you have an idea. Hey, we've got positive slope. Slope is up 1 over 1. All right? We've got positive slope and a y-intercept of negative 2. We should be okay to do that by hand. All right? So I basically got this going on. Right here is my graph, or my y-intercept is at negative 2. My slope is up 1 over 1, or... Down one, left one. So I got a graph doing that. If I was just graphing x minus two, that's what that graph would look like. We'll deal with the parameters of it in a second. All right? I want to graph x minus three. So let's come right here and let's graph f of x equals x. I'm sorry, not minus three, plus three. My fault. X plus three. So you know what that is? All right, it's a y-intercept of three. All right, so I know the graph is crossing the y-axis right there. Slope is 1, so I can go up 1, right 1. Or I can go down 1, left 1. There's my dots. There are my two lines. So if I was doing them separately, that's what it would be. But you can tell from the problem, here's what's going on. I've got parameters on this. So on my graph, when I graph this, if x is less than negative 1, I want it to be the x minus 2 graph. So let's go take a look at what this looks like. So kind of the point that we're really dealing with here is where is each graph when we're at negative 1? So let's go to the x minus 2 graph, and you can see that I'm down here at negative 3 on the y-axis, and that's where this graph picks up, and it takes off right there. So I'm taking this part of the x minus 2 graph from negative 1, and I'm drawing the graph on here. Now, what do I do on the end? Well, I do whatever the sign says. So when x is smaller than negative 1, this is the graph. There's no equal sign there, so I'm going to put an open dot right there. So what this shows is an x minus 2 graph for where x is less than negative 1. Remember, as x goes left, our numbers get smaller. So we're dealing with this part of the x minus 2 graph. When it's greater than or equal to negative 1, I want it to be the x plus 3 graph. So let's look at where x is negative 1, and you can see that my y is at 2. So at negative 1, 2 is this x plus 3 graph, and it's crossing at 3 right there, and it's taken off that way. And since I have an equal sign here, I'm going to put a closed dot. This is called a piecewise function. All right, everybody see that? So make sure that we can check and see what it's going to be is if x is less than negative 1, it's an x minus 2 graph. If x is greater than or equal to negative 1, we have the x plus 3 graph. And so what you end up, what happens is this is not included at negative 1, but this one is. So when we talk about in the rest of direction, say identify domain and range, Remember, domain is all the x values that show up on the graph. Well, all the x's, you know, from here to the left, all these x's are on there. If I keep going, so all to the left, we're good. 
Well, when I get right here, that's not included, but negative one is included there, and then I have all the numbers out to the right. So my domain is still all real numbers, just like it would be with linear. The reason this happens is because I have a closed dot here, all right? So that point's included. So even though it wouldn't have been included, negative one would not have been included here, it is still included. So any x value shows up on this graph somewhere. The range is a little bit different because I don't have all my range values, all right? Look at this. I have a range, and then from negative three, not including that, up to two, I don't have anything showing up for my life. So smaller than this, my graph's going down, we're good. Bigger than this, my graph's going up, we're good. So when I write the range, I put the smallest value, so it's at negative three, it is not including negative three, so I don't put an equal sign. How did I know that? Because we have an open dot right here. Range is wise, all right? Okay, and then I'm, I've got my point at two, so I'm less than or equal to two. Now, we gotta look at this. And you're like, okay, so you just wrote the stuff in between. Well, that's not my range. That is the stuff that doesn't show up there. So we've looked at writing domain and range where we squeeze numbers in, but between negative three and two, I don't have any y values. So that doesn't work. You're like, well, coach, what do I do? Well, then we got to split it up twice. And right here, I can write, all right, my y's are less than negative three. We could have written f of x there as well. Okay? And then I have this, or my y's go bigger than 2. So y's are greater than, since it's a closed dot, it gets an equal to 2. There is the range. All right? So that's something that's a little bit different than what we've seen, but it's something that we can do. Guided practice 1. Okay? If x is smaller than 0, so right from the x-axis, if I'm going to the left, my graph is going to be x plus 2. Going to the right, it's going to be x, and I'm going to have a closed dot on that bottom line because that's where my equal sign is, all right? Those are called piecewise functions. All right, so now let's look at, and let's jump to example two. And this one gives us the graph. I'm on page 102, but it does not tell us what the lines are. So we're going to have to write these equations of these lines, but we can do it. All right, so basically let's kind of set it up. I know that it's this graph is happening up until the point where x is 1, not included where x is 1. From where x is 1 to 2, I've got this graph, okay? And then from where x is 2 and getting greater than, I've got this graph. So we're going to have three different graphs here, and we're going to have three different piecewise functions. Now let's walk through, okay? So here's what it's going to look like. Let's find the equation of this graph. I know the y-intercept is 3, so it's something times x plus 3. We've got to figure out what our slope is. You're like, Coach, how do we do that? Well, let's just do rise over run. So I know this point is intersecting the grid. I know this point where the open dot is is intersecting the grid, so count. That's up to right 1. So remember, if I'm doing rise over run, I'm stood out here to the side. That is up to right 1. That is a slope of 2. So this line right here is 2x plus 3. Now we've got to put the parameter on it. So what this graph is saying, it is the 2x plus 3 graph if x, and we're talking about x's, this are x's going left, so is less than, and what x point are we at? We're at 1. So that first line is 2x plus 3, and it shows up if x is less than 1. Why did I just put a less than? Because it's an open dot. There's no equal sign. The reason I put less than and not greater than is because from 1, the graph's going to the left. That's getting smaller. All right, let's deal with this one right here. It's a little bit tougher. There's no y-intercept. Okay, so I know what my slope is right now. All right, rise over run. All right, says up 1, left 1. So for this second line, I went up 1, but I went left 1 for rise over run. What does that clean up to? Well, that cleans up to negative 1. So I know the slope is negative 1 times x. Now, don't draw in your book, but continue this line on and look where, if I go up one more spot, I'm at the y-intercept right here. What's that spot? That spot is 2. So I know my y-intercept is 2. So this line, this little part right here, all right, that little part is negative x plus 2. Now watch how we write this. I've got two parameters on this one. When that happens, put the smallest one on the left, 
the biggest one on the right, and sandwich your X in the middle. So it's going to look a little bit like what we tried to do with our range in the first example, and we realized, hey, that, that wasn't the range. Okay? But when I'm talking about this line, here's the parameters. The graph is negative X plus 2 if, and X is at 1 right there, is less than or equal to, I've got a closed dot, my X or my graph is happening in between these endpoints, and then I put my biggest endpoint on the right, which is at 2. I put an equal sign because there were closed dots on both ends of that. So the graph is negative X plus 2 if we're showing from 1 to 2 on the X axis. That's how we define it. All right, let's look at this one. Now, this one looks weird. Like, I don't know what's going on. You've got to know that if we have a horizontal line, that that is a Y equals graph. But I'm not going to come here and put Y equals 3 because this is already saying, hey, what does Y equal? Like here, Y equals 2X plus 3. And then if X is less than 1, Y equals negative X plus 2 if X is between 1 and 2. So then I'm going to go Y equals just 3. It's just a horizontal line with zero slope. And now we've got to put parameters on it. All right? And that is if our X's are from 2 and forever. It's not including 2, so we're going to be X is greater than 2. No equal sign because it's an open dot. And from 2, we're getting bigger. So we're greater than 2. When you write your parameters, you write them in terms of X. Now let's talk about domain and range. Our domain, so from negative, or excuse me, from positive one, we're good. When I get to positive one, it looks like there's a break, but remember this point's included. So we keep going and we're good. All X's are being used to two. This X, X is two is being used and then the graph picks up. So our domain is still all real numbers, okay? Now let's talk about the range. Remember, range means what values on the graph or what Y values never show up. Well, from up here, when we think top and bottom, from right here down, we're good. Even though there's a couple of graphs happening, but we're good from here down. But from here up, I got nothing. There's not any graph ever showing up above this point, so let's figure out where we are. One, two, three, four, five. Y at five is as big as we get. It's not equal to five. It's getting real close to it. So when I write the range, the range is Y is less than five. I didn't put an equal sign here because my top point wasn't a dot. And so there's my domain and range. So that's kind of how it all ties in. It is a little bit tricky, but it is definitely something that you guys can do. Okay? We can do piecewise function for absolute value. Okay? They want the graph if f of x equals x if x is greater than zero. They put this that f of x is zero when x is zero. That's just at the origin. You can kind of see in that box what's going on. Okay, last thing I want to talk to you about is just graphing absolute value functions. All right, so I'm example four. We're now on page 104. And again, the, the intent of these notes, if you're not getting this, if you don't understand it, go rewatch it. Walk back through it. You can go to Khan Academy and you can type in any of this stuff and look up other lessons as well. So take advantage of the opportunity you have to learn. So f of x equals absolute value of 2x minus 4. Now when we graph this, generally you can go to a table like the book does and that's fine. I am very okay with this being in the calculator. All right. So we're going to go on a calculator. We're going to go to y equals. We're going to clear it out. Remember absolute value is math, numeric, the first one. So I'm going to do 2x. I'm going to go behind it and put minus 4. Zoom 6 is a standard window. Let's graph. Now if you'll notice, the y-intercept is at negative 4. You think that's a coincidence that this number back behind the absolute value is negative 4 and my y-intercept is negative 4? Not coincidental at all. So come down here to negative 4. Put your vertex to that bottom of that graph. Now, if you can see, this graph is crossing the x-axis at 2 and negative 2. So there's two points that we can use. 2, negative 2. And I can draw that absolute value graph right there. So that's not using every point that's in the table that's in the book, but I found the vertex, I found the x-intercepts, and we're good. If you'll draw the y-intercept and the x-intercepts, that's a super easy way to do that. All right? Get down in here to guided practice 4A. We could just put that in. Notice there's no number back behind the absolute value. Our y-intercept would be zero here. Okay? Guided practice 4B, a little negative sign in front of x, that'll flip 
that absolute value graph upside down, this plus one back here is going to tell you, hey, the y-intercept is at one. And so we can kind of deal with that. We'll deal with transformations later on in this class. This concludes the stuff that we're learning in Chapter 2, and we'll be testing over Chapter 2 in the very near future. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Take ownership of your education. If there's something you're not understanding through the notes, you can re-watch them. And then, obviously, you can always ask me for help. Thank you.